there is really nothing that Israel respects anymore in any way in its relentless war in West Asia, anything that it perceives as somehow in the way of what it wants will be targeted, will be attacked with lethal and brutal force. The latest the latest transgression is that it is now targeting uh, UN missions in Lebanon. The, the news that we learned over the last couple of uh, days and, and hours is that there were shots fired and with, with uh, Israeli equipment was used in order to uh, target the United Nations interim forces in Lebanon, which are stationed there on Security Council behest, right? The Security Council mandates these forces to be there and just recently in August renewed the mandate for this um uh, for the for these forces and uh, you know now israel is even targeting even those positions because because they are a kind of nuisance in the plan of israel of flattening southern Lebanon, right? You need to get these forces out. So at the moment, Israel is still tapping at the door now very loudly with its uh, with its guns and its equipment. So uh, there was this wonderful report here written by uh, Philip G Giraldi uh, um, on, uh, uh, on this homepage here, the UNZ Review. Um, that that uh, gives a wonderful overview, actually, of, of what happened. Um, I will read you a couple of passages from this, because Mr. Uh, Giraldi put this very uh, eloquently and put it into context in a way that, that, uh, that, is, that is very well done. Uh, in one incident now, Israel's armored vehicles smashed the way through the gate of a Unifil base, allegedly using chemical weapons that injured 15 UN soldiers. Now, this is outraging for the first time, really, like uh, European capitals, although that's not entirely true. Some, some European capitals have been highly critical of, of Israel even before, but and especially the um, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro, Pedro Sanchez has spoken out against the uh, horrific deeds of Israel in Gaza and, and, and Lebanon, but now this is going further. Um, Pedro Sanchez is now urging Europeans to cut off all trade and especially weapon sales with Israel, and French President Emmanuel Macron declared an embargo on selling weapons to Israel and called for an imminent ceasefire, while several Prime Ministers have all expressed their outrage at Israeli sanctions. Giorgia Meloni of Italy observed that two bases manned by Italian soldiers had been hit. Her Minister of Defense, Guido Grosetto, called the attack on the Unifil bases totally unacceptable and elaborating that this was not a mistake uh, or an accident. Of course it is not. Of course not. Um, this is this is done very intentionally in order to get rid of these uh, these uh, forces that uh, that act as a as a liaison right back to the to the Europeans and the the what this does now is obviously puts more pressure on Israel to kind of adjust its war tactics. But the war tactics are. Um, annihilation of populations, right? And sheer reign of massive terror, all while yelling that Israel is the actual victim of everybody else, right? Um, and now these attacks, though, Israel is... is in, I, I can't understand it anymore, because at some level, I would guess that you need certain friends and you need to be somehow friendly to someone. And if not to the governments of the collective West that you, at least to some extent, depend upon, then, well, um, what, what is the strategy? Are you really going to fight everyone and everything? But that seems to be it. As long as the United States stands with its, with its total uh, military apparatus behind Israel, it seems that there's nothing that 
that they still value. I mean, certainly not human life. I mean, we've seen that over the last one year. Clearly, um, human life in Gaza, the Palestinian lives are um, actually not only not valued, they are actively, I mean, destroyed right this 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 is something this is a population that israel is trying to get rid of and exterminate and uh, displace and you know uh, pull uh, continue the genocide the way it has gone and now it is it has uh, extended israel has extended that to lebanon instead of uh, going for a ceasefire and convincing Hezbollah that way to stop the the support the the the, the fight or the uh, or Yemen Israel is escalating the the fighting and now it, it these these UN peacekeepers are getting in the way um here, our, our colleague, Mr. Giraldi, um, actually continues. He's saying that, as usual, Israel portrayed itself as the innocent victim surrounded by evil neighbors. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called on the UN chief to remove the UN peacekeepers who are now deployed in southern Lebanon. He claimed, without providing any evidence, that UNIFIL was serving as a human shield to his polar terrorists. This endangers both those in UNIFIL and the lives of our soldiers. Mr. Secretary General, get the UNIFIL forces out of harm's way. It should be done right now, immediately. Uh, this is like Netanyahu, uh, this one, uh, this place wants a free hand to, to wreak even more havoc on Lebanon, right? And terrorize, terrorize the Lebanese into submission, the way they are terrorizing the Palestinians into utter submission. Um, Although with the Palestinians, it's it's yet an, another story because there now we understand that in Gaza the end game is obviously the uh, complete, uh, well, the complete emptying out of the Gaza Strip, be it by killing everyone who lived there or be it by uh, by chasing them out of the country of the, of these places eventually. Um, and in Lebanon, it seems to be again this this terrorism state terrorism against Lebanese civilians because uh, what is happening at the same time is that that they still uh, attack the infrastructure of the state the civil infrastructure um, deliberately again it is hospitals it is mosques it is it is uh, ambulances that that try to rescue people um, so just today, Israel uh, actually struck uh, a Lebanese town and killed its mayor there, together with about uh, 16 to 20 more officials that were trying to coordinate aid deliveries. Uh, even The Guardian is reporting about this. And, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's hard to read these articles because they still, even while this is going on, still, so, still try to somehow make it seem a little bit less the less a problem of Israel make, make make Israel seem a little bit less guilty even though it is such an obvious case of war crime after war crime after war crime the guardian still tries to cover up for Israel, although it has to admit that, well, Israel struck these these places, and you can see the utter devastation in something that is obviously a residential area, right? Obviously, like all the pictures speak that very clear language, and still the Guardian manages to to write things like the following. I find this uh, quite quite telling that <clears throat> quoting. Hezbollah has stepped up the frequency of its attacks in Israel in recent days, despite the loss of most of its senior military and political leadership. A drone attack on a military base in northern Israel and on Sunday killed four soldiers and wounded 54. Its deputy secretary, Naim Qasem, said on Tuesday that the group had uh, adjusted its tactics to cause renewed damage to Israel. So you see how these last paragraphs are building up the horrible damage that Hezbollah is doing, you know, the utter carnage that it is causing, right? Right? Like, and then it builds up to more than 2,350 people have been killed and 10,906 wounded in Lebanon since Hezbollah fired rockets at Israel on October 8th, 2023 in solidarity with Hamas attacks a day earlier. Do you see how these 2,350 people are basically put into into a into the context i mean all of these all of these casualties here uh, killed and wounded are basically being 
cited as an outcome of his polos action. So these were not... The Guardian manages to spin this in a way that, although it doesn't say so, it really sounds as if these 2,350 people died due to the actions of Hezbollah, not due to Israel's indiscriminate strikes against, uh, against even civilians and civilian infrastructure. And this, this still, it's still, it's still, um, I, I don't know, I, it makes me, it makes me wonder what goes through the mind of the people who formulate these sentences. You don't formulate a sentence like this when you are pretty clear about what is happening and who does the killing and who does the dying. And we've seen that also with Gaza and with the Palestinians, right? This constant framing um, explicitly and implicitly as the death that is ensuing um, actually being the result of the uh, Hamas actions. And the Israelis are just somewhere in the middle, you know, like uh, is Israel is just in the middle and the, the bombs of the United States are just, 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 you know, carriers of the death and destruction that Hamas brought on its own people. Uh, and this is continuing now, and the Israelis are now trying to pull this against the United Nations. And, you know, the, 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 Mr. Giraldi also absolutely correctly uh, identified that this is not the first time Israel is is shooting at the United Nations. Of course, they did exactly the same in Gaza. Um, he, Mr. Giraldi continues by saying, it is not the first attack by Israel on United Nations personnel, and it will probably not be the last as the Israeli occupation forces, um, as, the, if, as the Israeli occupation force has been de facto waging war against the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine, Palestine refugees in the Near East UNRWA, in Gaza over the past year, targeting and killing its personnel and denying or blocking its largely humanitarian mission. And um, let's not forget the incident in which Israel targeted these food um, food aid truck uh, trucks and killed all of these uh, uh, helpers in like three different in three different cars and blew up all of the cars. The Israel is now continuously also. It's, it's firing at everybody. <laughs> I wonder how long it takes the Europeans and the West in general to wake up to the fact that everybody's on the chopping block. Everybody who opposes Israel is on the chopping block. And Israel is getting, is getting more and more crazy and just utterly unhinged in its, in its assaults. Um, instead of trying to de-escalate and stop bombings in order to, to get to a ceasefire and to hostage exchanges, you, they do more and more and more bombings and it, is, it plays into Netanyahu's hand, hands who wants even a greater war. Israel is now using a strategy of burning its entire neighborhood in the hope of a decisive victory, especially against Iran, and against like destroying and killing all of its enemies, not understanding that what it is fighting is a resistance movement that resists exactly what Israel has been doing for the last 70 years. And the more Israel puts pressure, the more the resistance is gonna get is, is gonna grow. Because now Israel is showing all of the Arabs who thought that maybe there's an out, there's a there's a way of of living with the the Israelis that at the end of the day this regime is is going after going to go after all of them and it is going to accept nothing else but absolute submission of everybody else and anyone else and its greater is its dream of greater israel it's growing it's it's growing of its land of its territory um, is inherent in what it is in what it is trying to achieve and while we were told while we were told that it is utterly unacceptable that russia is trying to aggrandize itself and grow its territory through a military force we are now also simultaneously told that this is okay when Israel does it, it is okay. Israel has the need, has the right, and uh, to <laughs> the right to self-defense, <laughs> this famous right to self-defense, and which then will end up in in Israel also physically um, um, growing, which is which is obviously the goal. 
Um, Mr. Giraldi actually gives a gives a good example of how 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 violent these Zionists now are, and how also the Europeans should start to worry. They should really start to worry that they might be next. Um, in one particularly charming threat, um, coming from Jewish former White House advisor Matthew Brodsky, who has lived and studied in Israel. Um, Brodsky recommended in a tweet on X that Israel should attack Irish peacekeepers in southern Lebanon. He wrote in his tweet that Israel should carpet bomb the Irish area and then drop napalm over it. The tweet included a map showing the deployment of Ireland's peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon, presumably to help guide the Israeli pilots. And you know, Israel... Uh, Ireland was, of course, the count one of the countries that, from the beginning, uh, ever since like years ago, was a strong supporter of the Palestinians. It was a sort of strong supporter of the stu- two-state solution. It was a strong was standing with Palestinians and and has called out Israel's atrocities. And that these Zionists are now ob- openly on Twitter calling for uh, the eradication, the physical eradication of of. Irish forces. It just shows that these that these people do not do not. It's it's not just their environment. It's not just West Asia, the Middle East, that the the Zionists claim they have a right to kill anyone and everything. It goes much further, right? You you. That's why I do hope that the Europeans at some point get the message that they will be next if they demand an end to. Israel's um, Israel's absolute demand for dominance over everybody else. Um, I don't know how long this can still go together with the West's procl- proclamation of everybody created equal and, and equitable and, and social uh, social needs and we take care of each other and be good and, and, and we are all against hate speech, you know, we need to curb down hate speech. The, the hate speech that's coming from, from, from Israel's prime minister and from its, from its highest representatives and what we see on social media is just such an outrage that it is really hard for me to find uh, to find words um and just it, to close this uh, mr giraldi actually quotes another great thinker um and and an observer john whitbeck who's an international lawyer um who's been working for decades and decades and decades with the palestinians and and for their rights and mr whitbeck um, said very pointedly that by their venality, cowardice, moral, moral bankruptcy, and near treason, the American political class is flushing a once gray country down its history's toilet, and the global West, if it does not liberate itself from the domination by the Israeli-American empire, risks a similar fate. Because the entire approach of Israel, of this tiny little country with its 7-8 million inhabitants, um, this is only possible, this genocide in Gaza, this terror, uh, terrorism against Lebanon, the terrorism against all of its neighboring states, including Syria, on which uh, Israel, you know, habitually fires rockets and destroys the, the um, uh, civilian airport in Damascus time and time and again. Um, all of that um, is possible because the United States stands firmly and without any hesitation behind Israel. And whenever we read that, there, that that the United States actually is thinking about putting some pressure on Israel, that is nothing but camouflage. It really means nothing. As long as the United States doesn't actually switch off the money and the weapons, I mean, they are the same thing actually, right? But if the US doesn't stop the flow of weapons, and actually takes back some of these, you know, aircraft carriers and whatnot they have stationed there in order to tell Israel, look, you're going to be alone. Stop it. As long as they don't do that, then Israel is is going to have have this blank blank check, which they will use, and they now wanna they are laying waste to the Middle East again, again, um, and. 
ever more blatantly, ever more blatantly. There, there, there are no more red lines. So, um, my friends, it is a dire situation. I, I, I'm at loss of words. The war between Ukraine and Russia can at least be rationally, rationally grasped. It can at least be rationally taken, taken layer after layer you can try to look through it and you can try to look for the the tit for tat and the and the, the strategies but the israeli approach now is just burning everything and um it might very well burn itself in the process that is that is very much an option but it will cost it will cost millions and millions of lives with this sad news um good night and see you next time mm -hmm.